Hey folks, Matt Easton here, and I'm here with Mark Gilbert again. Um, and Hello. who, incidentally, his club is called Riddle of Steel. In, ca in yeah. case I hadn't mentioned that before, so Riddle of Steel. And um, so Mark's got lots of experience doing melee um, yeah. and melee training. And in actual fact, one of the main reasons I brought Mark in to um, instruct at Fight Camp many moons ago now, um, several years ago is because of his expertise at dealing with multiple opponent um, situations, both one against multiple opponent and multiple against multiple. So small group combat and larger group combat as well. And this is an area, as we've talked about before, this is an area that's not generally covered by HEMA. In theory it is. It is definitely should come within the umbrella of HEMA, but it tends to be overlooked or ignored by most HEMA practitioners. Um, and I think this is a great shame because, first of all, it's a hugely fun aspect of, of the art, of, of, the, of the thing that we do that is historical combat. Um, but also, it's hugely important if you want to understand how certain weapons and armour and weapon sets actually functioned in conjunction with each other. You know, what you think about um, sword and shield, for example, the way of using a sword and shield, can change, in my opinion, anyway, I don't know what Mark thinks, but can change quite drastically when you fight in a multiple opponent situation. Um, so, for example, the way that I use sword and buckler one-on-one -on -one is not the same as the way that I use sword and buckler in a group fight. Um, and in Scholar Gladiatoria, we do group-on-group -group fighting, uh, we do melee fighting, partly because it's just great fun, but also because it gives us a different way of looking at how to use these weapons. You know, the way that spears are employed um, can be quite different if you're in a group compared to if you're fighting one on one. Um, but inevitably, what came up uh, in chatting earlier with uh, with Mark was uh, the recent review I did of the Battle of the Bastards in Game of Thrones. And that's right, this is yet another <laughs> Game of Thrones related video. Um, but it's also an opportunity for us to talk a little bit more about melee and massed combat from our perspectives based partly on history and partly on personal experience. So what were your thoughts first of all about that battle in the in that episode, in episode 9? So uh, first of all I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, the episode and, and thoroughly enjoyed the combat and I thought the, the kind of the chaos that it kind of summoned up uh, when, when Jon Snow was was kind of standing there uh, getting involved in, in, in fighting and taking out some of his opponents, being narrowly missed by horses, narrowly missed by arrows, all of that kind of chaos uh, was exciting. And in a sense, the, the battles that I've the battles that I've been in, um, albeit mainly live roleplay battles, but anywhere up to two thousand aside, chaos is something that is very common at, at times. Um, yes certain units can be controlled but it normally doesn't take that long be before you've got an element of chaos so th that seemed quite kind of realistic um, to me and it, it kind of felt right I mean obviously we all saw it um, we saw that Jon Snow was was really just tricked in a sense um, his, his emotions were tweaked um, and he was unmanned and he ran off uh, in, into combat and was, was almost undone um, by that situation. But I suppose the, uh, the thing that um, really hit me was... Now, are you ready for this? Yeah. Matt? Um, I don't know. I don't know what Mark's <laughs> going to say here. But... When you've got a giant... Yeah, yeah, okay. In, ...in your army... Yeah. Okay. When you've got someone that is so superior yeah. In terms of his size, the war machine, and his, yeah. it, it, absolutely, he, he is a war machine. Yeah, he is a he is the biggest individual asset yeah. in Jon Snow's army. Yeah, and what do you do? You don't even give him a weapon. <laughs> no, no, not even that. As as many of the commenters uh, on my uh, video review said, why not an, just a tree, just like a tree, an uprooted tree, anything. Give, give him, give him a tree. Give him something with a yeah. bit of range. He he would be able to wield a really large weapon yeah. and with his strength he could be wiping out 
yeah. and clearing a route. And, and we know that they do use weapons because it's shown in previous episodes. I mean, they even use bows. There's, you know, one uses a one of the other giants uses a giant bow. Yeah, it could have even been one. One actually, I can't remember. But one of the giants uses a giant bow at the. It, at it, the in terms of doing damage, some sort of huge bludgeoning weapon. Yeah, a tree or something. But also fit in with some armor. Yeah, yeah. There was a nice suggestion actually. I can't. I, sorry, I can't remember um, who suggested it. But the idea of even if he did, because I I had made a big thing about shields. Yes. I thought that you know why didn't Jon Snow give his army shield? Like it's the most fundamental thing. Shields, um, or really long pole arms, one or the other. But having neither is just anyway. Um, but if they had shields actually just sticking a whole load of shields all over him would have worked really, really well. Well, the fact that, a uh, and, and you know a lot more about armour than I do, <laughs> but what, what thickness does armour need to be to protect someone? Depends against, what it's made of, but yeah. Again, so so the, 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 the potential armour that they, they've got available to them in Game of Thrones, yeah. you see people in, in plate yeah. kind of armour, yeah. which is going to have a high resistant resistance to, to blows and is going to be... To a human blow, but not against a giant. No, blow. but yeah. the, the point I'm making is, that, so how approximately thick would that, well, would steel, that, would that um, be? Well, this is a good question actually. Um, I like being uh, asked the questions for <laughs> a change. Um, steel armour, uh, if we took about the 14th, 15th century, it depends where on the body you're talking about. Helmets are usually about 1.5 to 2 millimetres thick. Yeah on something like a bassinet. If we're talking about arms or legs, you're talking about more like about one millimetre thick. Okay. However, um, unlike modern armour, which tends to be of a un uniform thickness because it's made out of sheet steel, which is rolled in factories, um, they were hammering it out of billets. Yeah. So the variation in thickness is a lot more. So what you might find is something like a bassinet might be at the very top as thick as th three millimetres thick but on the sides might be 0.8 of a millimetre yeah. thick, so it might vary quite a lot. So, so you're to, talking about to, that So around two millimetres or two so millimeters is, is, gonna, average, is yeah. gonna be quite effective against a, against a, against sword, a, against sword, a sword or blade. most types of hammer. So my, my, my kind of point, the reason I've asked you that question, and my point is that weight of that armour mm. that will stop a human sword blow yeah. ha is, is a proportion of the weight of that warrior. Yeah. Now, if you scale that up, you only need two or three mil of, of metal armor on a giant, yeah. and in relation to his size, and the arrows will just that's gonna up. that's gonna weigh almost nothing to him in comparative relative yeah. to a warrior. So just get a load. If you get another giant, John, get a load of armorers, okay, and it doesn't even have to be particularly good armor. Just rig it on that giant, give him a long old tree or something, well, and even he's going to be close to indestructible. Well, even you don't even need metal. I mean, they could stick a giant gambeson on a, on a giant. Yeah, yeah. And you think about the you think about the thickness of a gambeson. A really good gambeson, which is made up of, let's say, twenty layers of linen. Twenty layers of linen can sometimes stop an arrow, and can usually stop uh, something like a sword or a hand weapon. Um, now, if a human can wear 20 layers of linen, how many layers of linen can a giant wear? All you need is lots of linen. Uh, so you stick a gambeson on a giant, and, and that gambeson might be that thick. Yeah. That is going to stop anything. all, uh, basically anything. anything except for cannons. It's going to, I mean, yeah. that would stop bullets that much linen. Yes. Uh, from, you know, from normal hand, you know, handguns and rifles and stuff. Um, so yeah, just stick a great big padded, long padded uh, gambeson on a giant. But of course, that would completely ruin the battle. <laughs> because, uh, because John turning up with one giant, in reality, I mean, I, you know, even as it was set up, they didn't give him a weapon, they didn't give him a shield. He could have just stamped around. I mean, as I said in my video, he could have kicked, if he'd just done, given a good run up, he could have kicked right the way through the enemy's um, ranks of, of infantry. He could have just kicked through the shield wall. Saying that, he he does take some damage from arrows, and he, if he's he been poked by spears, yeah. so... He, we saw him being troubled uh, by, uh, by pipes Absolutely, and stuff, so he's yeah. being troubled by that stuff, that stuff's yeah. causing him pain, so he... So what we're saying is actually giants are a, they're a bit wussy, they're actually not very tough. They're really big, but they're actually not very tough. He didn't seem to be as effective as he could have done. No. Have that's the, that's, that's the, a bit of a bombshell, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. So, were there any other things about the battle that you thought? I mean, the main points that I made, as far as I can remember, um, were shields, 
They're like, where are all the shields? And even when you saw people with shields, they weren't really using them, except for the, the of course, Ramses shield wall. It yes. was like he, he held the trump card because he had shields, like, like no one else has thought to bring shields to a battle. Um, shields, helmets, but we've talked about helmets before. The armour, generally, in Game of Thrones is not treated as armour, it's treated as, as costume and things seem to just go straight through armour like it's not there. With very rare exceptions, um, like when Arya uh, tried to stab um, the Hounds, sort of brigandine type thing, and it didn't go through. So when the armour is required to behave as armour for a specific plot point or discussion point, then it does, but every other time it seems to be penetrated straight away. And the fact that, you know, John didn't seem to, except for digging some trenches, which we couldn't see and they seemed to abandon fairly quickly, um, they didn't seem to pr really prepare for the battle ahead of them. They didn't have enough people with bows, or they didn't have enough people with long spears, or they didn't have enough s shields. So it just like looked like they just turned up and they weren't really ready. I mean, possibly to be fair, to be fair on them, they hadn't had a massive amount of time to prepare and a good proportion of their troops were wildlings and those troops, it seems, fight in a culturally specific way. Yeah. So they are dealing with changing cultures in terms of if they were to introduce um, those, those shields mm. um, to them. So maybe... But we did see some of them had shields, okay. so, so they do know about shields. Yeah. Um, because you can see some of the wildlings do have round shields made of hide, they look like. Okay. Great, you know, it provides some protection from all the arrows being shot at them, but... But yeah, tactically... It, it seems to me poor. the fundamental problem is that wildlings suck. It seems <laughs> that wildlings are really, really bad at fighting, except for when they're attacking undefended civilian settlements. So, <laughs> it seems that whenever they fight anyone who's prepared for it, they get beaten. They never beat anyone, did they? I think, you know, they got beaten by Stannis' army, they got beaten by the, the, the 30 however many um, crows they were defending the wall. They got defeated by basically everybody. They're, they're just rubbish. I think they're used to fighting amongst themselves <laughs> yeah. with, with, with limited resources and they, therefore they've not been able to adapt. And that has an interesting crossover to what we spoke about yeah. earlier about Absolutely. only fighting with the same people all the time and yeah. not pushing yourself to fight with new and more challenging opponents. Well they hadn't fought cavalry before and they were wiped out as, as he said by, by Stannis. Yeah. Anyway, so there we go. Um, some, more, <laughs> some more things to think about. <laughs> Thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts Mark. Cheers Bye folks. Then. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.